All right, JL Audio, RD1000. Got on the bench. Not rated for one ohm. Let's try one ohm dynamic 40 hertz. Don't blow my amp up, please. My name is Derek and I do YouTube videos about audio equipment. If you guys enjoy that type of stuff, you might enjoy subscribing to my channel and I'd appreciate it. All right, friends, here we have the JL Audio RD 1000 slash one. This is a kind of their midline. It's between the JX and the XD. So I'd say it's maybe step two out of four, but let's, uh, let's unbox it and see what's inside. Right off the bat, you have the owner's manual, you have the little emblem and a hex key. The emblem, you can put it on either way, depending on which way you mount the amp. The RD1001 at 14.4 volts is rated 600 watts at four ohms, 800 at three ohms, 1000 at two. And at 12 and a half volts, it's rated 500, 650, and 800. It's nice to see both of those different numbers. It's unregulated power supply. These are by Bruce McMillan, who's a very famous amp designer. He's worked for JL for many years and some other companies in the past. So, cool. All right, let's take it out of the box. All right, so here you can see the amp. Pretty generic looking. RD1000, it looks like those are four gauge inputs. We have inputs and outputs for RCAs. We have remote level control, which does not come with. And we have dual outputs for, looks like maybe eight gauge. And there's a panel here on the top, two hex screws. We'll take those out and we'll check out the adjustments underneath. Now we've taken off the top panel. You can see you can have access now. To tighten up the hex screws for the um, power inputs and stuff. Next D switching technology, RD1000 slash one. Just has some silk screening there. Choose how you want it to turn on. Input voltage high or low. This has the clipping indicator as well, so you can actually set up the amplifier using your head unit, set it to 75%. And then use a test tone at 50 hertz or 40 hertz and turn this up until the clipping light comes on. And you've set up your amp without needing a DD1 or an oscilloscope or anything like that. So that's very helpful. All right, let's take a closer look at the amp's dimensions. You can see 14.66 inches long by 6.96 inches wide. And the metric equivalents. And the height is about 2.13 inches or 54 millimeters. So overall about an average size amp. These sell for $520 through JL dealers. However, I found this one as a B stock and it was actually about half that price. So great deal. All right, now we'll fire up the trusty old Amp Dyno 81 from Des Moines Engineering SMD. Let's see how this amp performs. All right, let's try four ohms, 40 Hertz certified 1% THD rated 600 Watts at 14.4. Seven ten at fourteen point five, and we pulled sixty nine amps of current. All right, dynamic burst two ohm, um, four ohms for the JL. Seven sixty six at fourteen point eight. All right, so JL rates this amp at three ohms because they have subwoofers that are three ohm uh, rated. But the amp dyno doesn't have a three ohm mode; it has a two point six seven. So we'll use that mode. See what we get: forty hertz certified up to one percent THD. All right, 9.53 at 14.2. All 
All right, JL RD 1000 slash one. Let's try two ohms certified at 40 Hertz. It's rated 1000 Watts at 14 four. Nice. 1206, 14.31. We pulled 115.5 amps of current. Now we'll try a dynamic run at two ohms, 40 hertz burst, simulating subwoofers. Thirteen eighty-five at fourteen point five. Look at that inrush current, one hundred and sixty-three amps. All right, now we'll check out the results here of the JL Audio RD one thousand. As you guys have already seen, this amp was impressive. It beat all its specs by quite a bit, about twenty percent or so. So, very nice job here, as expected. JL Audio is higher end, and they always do what they say. Now. Let's check out the internals of this amp and see what it's all about inside. All right, the RD1000 here. I've got the screws removed from the bottom. Let's see if we can take a gander at the guts. There we go. Very large daughter board here is gonna block quite a bit of the board. RD1000 main, JL Audio. Those are some tiny, tiny capacitors. Can't tell in the video. 35 volt, 820 microfarad. Those are Sam Samoxen. I don't know how to say that. You guys who are technicians are probably laughing at me because you know what they are. Here are the other ones. Let's see what we can see if these are. 105 degrees. I can't see the ratings because they're all on the other side. There's quite a few there. But there is the RD1000 slash one. All right, guys, there you have the test of the JL Audio RD1000. As usual, JL Audio amplifiers do not ever fail to impress. They always do well. This is not your average cookie cutter amplifier. This was designed in-house at JL Audio. It's easy for people to compare this to a different 1000 watt amplifier that you can get for 150 bucks, but it's not really the same. You've got a lot more reliability built in here. You've got the GL Audio name, you've got the dealer support, all that good stuff. So overall, I was very impressed with this amplifier and how it performed, especially the efficiency. If you guys notice in the 2 ohm load, it was very efficient, right around 80%, and that is impressive. So thanks as always for watching, commenting, and liking my videos. I appreciate it. If you guys want to see more content like this, make sure you subscribe. Special thanks goes out to... Jay, Matthew, Marcus, Jesus Tires, and Soundstream Registry. I'm out of here! Alright, I'm sure nobody would ever probably use this amp in an 8 ohm load, but I'm going to test it anyway, because I'm just weird like that. So let's try a certified 8 ohms mono for the RD1000. 40 hertz. All right, so still 400 watts at 8 ohms, 37 amps of current. All right, JLRD1000 here on the amp dyno. We're going to run it at a non-recommended load, 1.33 ohms at 40 hertz, certified up to 1% THD. Nice power, 1,453 watts at 14 volts. We put 161 amps of current. All right, JL Audio RD1000. Got on the bench, on the dyno. Not rated for one ohm. Let's try one ohm dynamic 40 hertz. Don't blow my amp up, please. Okay, it's going in and out of protect. See that? All right, so not designed for one ohm mono loads, but it is nice that the amp protects itself. Thank you, Mr. McMillan. Very nice job here on your design. Here's the full amp dyno result sheet. Check out the far right column, 1.33 ohms. Quite impressive. 
Make sure to check out some of my other videos on my channel. I have over 500 videos here on YouTube, most of them car audio related. Some home audio, some pro audio, some big dummy related. But anyway, just check them out if you get a chance. Thanks for watching.